I'm Corinne. I'm Thomas. Welcome to the Chill Spot. I'm Corinne. And this is Drake. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone had a great weekend. How was your weekend? Pretty good. Um, you know April Fool's is coming up. Today? Yeah. It is today, isn't it? I'm not going to do it. I'm not either. Fold ya. And I'm going to go back to bed. Okay. Okay. And get another nap. Just, I'm, I and came get to work. Just in. kidding. I never came to work. April Fool's. Yeah, I barely <laughs> never have done anything because it just makes me anxious. I'm not kidding. So, <laughs> so today though, we were going to talk about different types of coworkers and we're actually, we're going to talk about 11 types of coworkers mm -hmm. as a whole, but we're going to split into two different shows today and Wednesday. So make sure when you watch this one, you come back Wednesday. Right. So this, this could be me. Maybe, maybe it could. I, I could be a lot of these. I could see myself doing this one. Um, the first one is Chatty Cathy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and, yeah, well, it's self-explanatory. Right, you know? they, exactly. They don't stop talking. And you'll notice with these people, they sure talk their way out of work. Mm -hmm. um, the next one fits right in with talking their way out of work, the slacker. <laughs> um, they can work without working. There's no such thing, but okay. I know. They They're, come to work. That's what they do. They show up. <laughs> They're the ones that are always on break. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know why they're not fired, but I don't know how they get away with it, being yeah. a slacker. Yeah. There's reasons, though, you know, they're probably, there's probably a reason they're not fired. Um, they're drama queen. Mm -hmm. High school. That's what they are. High mm -hmm. school. And every building mm -hmm. has one. Every center has one. My best thing with them mm -hmm. is just keep your conversation short and to the point and move on. <laughs> exactly. And then you always have the victim. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you always yeah. have the victim. Um, they blame others um, for everything that, you know, instead of taking responsibility for themselves, they're always, oh, this person did this or this yeah. person did that. Um, just stay away from them. Yeah. Don't listen to them. Ignore them. You know, kind of like, um, what is that TV show host that does the cooking? Rachel. Rachel Ray. She takes that salt and throws it over her shoulder. That's for so good luck. Yeah. Just, oh. Okay. Or just like some omen yeah, thing. Just don't pay no attention to him. Emerald does that also, just so you know. He was on before Bam. Rachel Ray. <laughs> the one that I like is the silent hero. And I actually see you in this one. I do. Yeah. Yeah, but I, okay, I don't like to take credit, so this fits in great. So mm -hmm. they do their job and they don't want to take credit for it. My thing is, I, I feel like there's so many more you know, on the front line. And this, I love this one because mm -hmm. recently Lori and I were talking and she was telling me about how she met a member in a facility and she could just see something in her. She was very shy and she's seen something in her. And to me, those are the silent heroes. And there's so many of you mm -hmm. out there, you know, the ones that are working 60, 70 hours a week and they're still taking care of their family, but they're still showing up with a smile and doing great quality work. Like there's, that is a great one. There are so many there and is. more people should aspire to be that because you don't always have to get credit for what you're doing. And what I always tell people is if you have to go out and say, this is what I do, this is what I do, this is what I do. Guess what? You're not doing enough because you shouldn't have to right. tell people what you do. You should just live your life and do it and it will show what you do. And that's what I do. I don't know. Oh, I did this. I did this. Cause it, it feels weird to me for one. And it kind of makes you look arrogant and I'm not about that. Right. So if you have um, the silent hero, just reach out to them. You don't have to make a big production on the way you um, say thank you, but just you know, go over and say, hey, Drake, thank you for, for what you for Right, what you yeah, did. yeah. You know, and recognition's huge. Mm -hmm. But totally. they'll feel a little awkward. So mm -hmm. they'll, and that's just a thing. Right. That's a thing. That kind of personality doesn't want to be recognized, but make sure that you do. Because deep down in there, sometimes they need to be. Right. Just a reassurance. Yeah. Of what reassurance doing. is the biggest thing, more exactly. than recognition, maybe. Exactly. Um, the last one we're going to talk about today is actually the veteran. You. 
Yeah. Um, but you know, even I've been in the um, profession a long time, I can still learn and grow from the new CNAs oh, yeah. coming in. Yeah. You know, you're constantly learning new ways, new tricks on how to do anything. But um, just reach out to them and ask questions because no question is ever a dumb question. I agree. You know? And I feel our, some of our most veteran CNAs were CNAs before there was a state test. So they will continue to learn from the people that are taking the test. And that the education for CNAs varies a little, not much, but it varies a little as time evolves. So everyone can always learn. Something I learned recently, which I've asked in the buildings, is about locking the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Do you lock the wheelchair? I do now, but before that no, wasn't you didn't, a big it, that wasn't It was a, a thing big during transfer. Thing. Well, it's a Hoyer. That's the specific. Do you lock the wheelchair when you're doing a Hoyer transfer? Yes. Yeah. In my CNA class, you were taught not to do that. Really? And and I, yeah, because then the chair can move when the chair's it's not in your way basically. Right. You can move it. It takes you time to go over and unlock the chair. Mm -hmm. You're leaving the resident unattended. But different states, different things. So I learned that when I was CNA for nine years. I mean, everyone can always learn. Right. Uh, there's a lot that has changed over the years oh, since yeah. when I started from when you started. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were tying people down to the bed rails. I mean, we had restraints. I would and, not. I couldn't have and, done it. But back then, but, yes, I, mean, that's I understand. That we were, was normal. Right. And so to me, it's just totally taboo. It's like I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But that could be a whole other show, you know. I just believe you right. let people go through what they're going through, and tying them down doesn't allow that. Right. But I notice over the years, um, the profession has looked at things differently, and it has improved. And I've learned and grow and, and changed oh, yeah. my thinking over the years. You know, so it's it's always a good thing, a very positive thing to to learn from your coworkers. Oh, I agree. It doesn't matter whether you're a veteran or you're a new CNA fresh out of that class. There may be something that they learned that day that you have no clue about, mm -hmm. you know, so it's always good to work in a team together. You know, veterans can learn from the new CNA, ask questions the same as a new CNA can learn from I the agree. veteran. All right. So that's six. I hope that you guys all Tune back in on Wednesday to catch the final five. And then we're going to talk a little bit about a little bit about how to deal with some of these. Mm -hmm. So as always, it's great. And until next time, remember that CNAs matter.